a mim pare. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjami Hari Gopi Jana Balabha Giri Pijana Balabha Giri Vrindhadi Giri Vrindhadi Jasod Nandana Brajajanadandana Jasod Nandana Brajajanadandana Jamanatira Vanachadi Jamanatira Vanachadi Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hadi <coughs> Madhava Kunjabi Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hadi <coughs> Madhava Kunjabi Hadi Gopi Jana Balabha Giri Bhada Bhadi Giri Bhada Bhadi Gopi Jana Balabha Giri Bhada Bhadi Gopi Jana Balabha Giri Bhada Bhadi Yashoda Nandana Brajajanaranjana Yashoda Nandana Brajajanaranjana Jamuna Thira Vanachadi Jamuna Thira Bhana Chadi Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hadi Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hadi Jaya Radha Madhava Jami Hadi Madhava Kunjami Hadi Jayom Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Hari Ki Gora Premanandi Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya We're taking, through sound, we're taking the association of the gopis. Isn't that nice?
and their um, meditation upon Krishna while he's in the forest taking the cows. Just the, the previous, the last paragraph that we read. We're going to be reading, if you like to look it up, 1035, 8 through 11. 1035, 8 through 11. So the, previ the last paragraph is a quote from Canto 20, excuse me, ca Chapter 20, Canto 10. When the Vrindavan forest had thus become resplendent, filled with ripe dates and jumbo fruits, Lord Krishna, surrounded by his cows and cowherd boyfriends and accompanied by Sri Balaram, entered that forest to enjoy. They weren't really herding the cows, they were playing. And the cows followed along. Ooh, let's go. So, <clears throat> as a reminder, these um, our acharyas say these verses are in pairs. The first verse of the chapter is an introductory verse, and then there's two and three and four and five and six and seven. So this is now eight and nine and ten and eleven. And so and that's how it's been translated here, BBT. Um, the first verse is, <coughs> um, in general, it's the sound of Krishna's flute that is intended to call the cows and so forth, and then how other entities, other forms of beings, devotees of Krishna in the Vrindavan forest, how they respond, different, different, different responses. So, Text 8 through 11. Translation. <clears throat> Krishna moves about <clears throat> the forest in the company of his friends <clears throat> and vividly chants the glories of who vividly chant the glories of his magnificent deeds. He thus appears just like, this is the gopis saying he's not, but he's like, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is exhibiting his inexhaustible opulences. When the cows wander onto the mountain sides and Krishna calls out to them with the sound of his flute, the trees and creepers in the forest respond by becoming so luxuriant with fruits and flowers that they seem to be manifesting Lord Vishnu within their hearts. <laughs> As their branches bend low with the weight, the fruits and flowers cause their branches to bend low with the weight, the filaments <clears throat> on their trunks and vines stand erect out of ecstasy of love of God. This is the gopis speaking. And both the trees and the creepers pour down a rain of sweet sap <clears throat> that they didn't go catch in buckets and offer to Krishna because it says not to do that, right? Maddened by the divine honey-like aroma, of the Tulsi flowers on the garland Krishna wears. Swarms of bees sing loudly for him. And that most beautiful of all persons, guess who that is? <clears throat> Thankfully acknowledges and acclaims their song by taking his flute to his lips and playing it. Listen to this. The charming flute song then steals away the minds of the cranes, swans, and other lake-dwelling birds. Indeed, they approach Krishna 
close their eyes and maintaining strict silence, worship him by fixing their consciousness upon him in deep meditation. Elsewhere it says, I thought this was going to say this, he hears the sound of the bees and he catches the, the note that their bee buzz or sound is and he plays his flute according to that sound. And then they adjust the sound and he adjusts his flute playing and it's a concert. <laughs> Purport. Srila <clears throat> Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur has made several illuminating comments on these verses. He gives the analogy that just as when householder Vaishnavas hear a Sankirtan party approaching, they become ecstatic and offer obeisances. So the trees and creepers in Vrindavan become ecstatic when they hear Krishna's flute and bowed low with their branches and vines. The word darshaniya tilak in text 10 indicates not only that the Lord is, quote, the most excellent to see, but also that he, is, he decorated himself with attractive reddish tilak, taken from the mineral-rich earth of Vrindavan Forest. You had that question, right? Minerals, decorating? Oh, it was you. Srila Vishwanath Chakrabarti Thakur also points out that Tulsi, although exalted in many ways, is not normally considered an especially fragrant plant. However, Early in the morning, Tulsi emits a transcendental fragrance that ordinary people cannot perceive, but that transcendental personalities fully appreciate. The bees, who are privileged to swarm about the flower garlands worn by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, certainly appreciate this fragrance. And Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur points, uh, quotes from the Bhagavatam 315, 19, that the effect that the most fragrant plants in Vaikuntha also appreciate the special qualifications of Tulsi Devi. Paragraph. The word Sandita Venuhu in text 10 indicates that Lord Krishna placed his flute firmly upon his lips and the melody emanating from that flute is certainly the most enchanting of sounds as the gopis describe in this chapter. So Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur's commentary covers the verses in pairs. So he starts with eight and nine. As these rivers, this referring to the previous verse, six and seven, as these rivers, though unconscious entities are eternally perfect, being the forms of devatas, it is natural that they should react in this way, but see how the immobile trees of low birth, born due to previous karma, relish the sound of the flute in this way, another group of gopis spoke. When Krishna, endowed with unchanging opulence, achala vibhuti, similar to Narayana, Adi Purusha Iva, whose strength is described by the cowherd boys, wanders in the forest, being attracted by the souls there. All the creepers, along with their husbands, the trees, having directly seen Vishnu, who usually appears in the mind, weep tears in the form of streams of honey, not sap. They are just like Grahasta Vaishnavas who, on hearing Sankirtan, offer their obeisances 
along with their wives. Being endowed with flowers and fruit, the creepers have stai bhava, that's their fruit, along with sanchari bhava of joy, that's their flowers. They completely, their completely bent branches indicate the anubhava of paying obeisances. As their hairs were standing on end in joy, they displayed the sattvika bhava of romancha. Romanchas, here standing on end. Romancha compass or Charangavajo. Text 10 and 11. After describing the creepers and trees as householder devotees in the previous verse, the swans and cranes are described as detached atmaramas, worshipping Vishnu and hearing the flute. Paragraph. Krishna wore attractive markings made from mineral clays. Attractive markings made from mineral clays. Darshaniya Tilak. The phrase can also mean that Krishna was like Tilak, the most excellent among all beautiful things. Krishna wore a garland of five colors with fragrant Tulsi, whose honey was sought by greedy bees who hummed loudly because of their unrestricted madness. <laughs> Paragraph. There may be an objection. Usually the lotus, jasmine, and naga keshara are described as fragrant by ordinary people. Though the glories of Tulsi are much greater, her fragrance is not highly praised. The objection is answered as follows. Ordinary people can sense a little of Tulsi's fragrance, but spiritually advanced persons can experience her fragrance as greater than that of the lotus. Since the bees had qualification for the flower garland on Krishna's neck, they also could sense more fragrance in Tulsi than even the spiritually advanced persons. However, only Krishna's nostrils can smell the most sublime fragrances. By the covering of Yoga Maya, these fragrances cannot be perceived elsewhere. Their special, the special nature of Tulsi is stated in the description of Vaikuntha. Quote, this is Canto 3, Chapter 15, Text 19. Although flowering plants like the Mandrakunda, Kuru Baka, Utpala, Champaka, Arna, Punaga, Naga Keshara, Bakula, Lili, and Parijata, are full of transcendental fragrance, they are still conscious of the austerities performed by Tulsi, for Tulsi is given special preference by the Lord, who garlands himself with Tulsi leaves. Paragraph. When Krishna thought about what pitch he should play on his flute, the bees would buzz. And Krishna would play his flute according to that pitch. Respecting the song, when he placed his flute on his lower lip, the water birds left the lakes and, approaching Krishna, began to worship him. By seeing, hearing, and thinking of him, they closed their eyes, indicating that they were tasting the rasa. Vishwanath is a Rasika Bhakti. It always explains things that way. Here's Jiva Goswami. Again, broken into two verses, text 8 and 9. After having the cows drink the water and drinking the water himself, 
Along with the cows, he enters a mountainous area in the shade of beautiful trees. Letting the cows graze freely, he listens to his friends' songs glorifying him, and then he calls the cows with his flute, since they have wandered far off because of his inattention. When he plays the flute, then what to speak of the supreme worshipable rivers in the form of their presiding personalities, even the immobile trees in this place react in a similar fashion. That is explained in these two verses. Paragraph. His prowess is described in order. Anu Varnita. From birth pastimes, filled with the affection of his mother and father in the most excellent way, filled with prema, with all details of the pastimes by friends who always accompany him, Anu Charai, because of great friendship, or Anu Charai can indicate that the friends gather together with the same mood, or the word Anu Charai can indicate that the friends are next, Anu, to him, each Anu, displaying his skill in describing Krishna. Paragraph. His acts, filled with power, virya, are praised completely with rasa, bhava, ornaments, singing, rhythm, and gestures. He is an exceptional personality, Adi Purusha, or though he has fixed beauty and qualities like Narayana, Adi Purusha, he wanders in the forest. This shows his extremely playful nature. The example of Narayana is given to confirm his similar nature, not that he is the Lord. Though Krishna is actually the supreme, situated above Narayan, the gopis use the word iva, to indicate he is similar to Narayan. Iva means like. It means, well here it can, can mean other things too. Since the gopis' uh, natures are completely filled with sweetness like Krishna's and do not consider Krishna's powers, they use the word immovable wealth to indicate his natural wealth of sweetness which is unequaled and ever-increasing without decrease. Achala bhutihi. Achala bhutihi. So we know bhutihi, vibhutis. Achala bhutihi. This increasing sweetness is then shown in the consequent words. He wanders in the forest because the cows have disappeared, but actually... He eternally wanders in Vrindavan. Achala Bhutihi. He wanders in uneven areas. Giri Tateshu. Thus, the cows become tired. Thus, he calls them with his flute. As the crest jewel of cowherds, he is skillful at calling them. Paragraph. He wanders in the forest, then... In the forest, all the trees and creepers make known that Krishna, who spreads everywhere Vishnu, or enters every one, has appeared within themselves. The verb is in the feminine because the creepers, being women, represent the gopis' mood. The word iva in this case means exactly, rather than like. He appears within them because his actions are under the control of their love. Another meaning is that he is similar or iva to Narayan. By this they make clear the previous example, Adi Purusha Iva. 
The creepers, feminine, and the trees, masculine, are filled with fruits and flowers. They are endowed with all sadhanas, and their results are indicated in the following. Now here comes a very famous verse from the Bhagavatam. Yasyasti bhaktir bhagavat yakinchana sarvair gainais tatra samasate sara haraba bhaktasya kuto mahadguna mano ratena sati davato bahi The devatas just a second here problem The devatas, this is a translation, the devatas constantly dwell with all good qualities in that person who has pure bhakti for the Lord. There are no good qualities in the non-devotees, the non-devotee who chases after temporary material objects with desire for material pleasure. Then another verse from 11th Canto, Uddhava Gita. All auspicious means of perfecting, excuse me, all auspicious means of perfecting life are easily achieved by my devotee through bhakti. If somehow or other my devotee desires swarga, liberation, or residence in my abode, he easily achieves such benedictions. Paragraph. The bushes are bowing down heavy with fruit. Having seen Krishna with satisfied eyes, they become full of bliss, bowing like the four Kumaras. Honey flows, honey flows as tears for the creepers and trees. Their sprouting buds are their hair standing on end. This is famous. In Gokula, here's a Canto 10, Chapter 21, verse. Quote, My dear friends, when Krishna and Balaram passed from forest to forest with their cowherd friends, with their cows, carrying ropes to bind the cow's rear legs at the time of milking, by the generous sound of his flute, among all living beings, moving things become inert and trees sprout shoots in ecstasy. This is most amazing. And the final paragraph for that section, that's verses 8 and 9. The description also applies to the gopis. In both cases, they are spread with prema, though the word prema is in a particular compound. It applies to the other words in the verse by the power of its meaning. The trees shower honey or tears constantly and abundantly. Another version has shashruja. The trees produce tears in a remarkable way. Or the trees full of honey produce prema. The trees spread prema to all onlookers by their actions. In the case of the trees and gopis, Krishna has spread everywhere. And this is revealed in certain signs in the trees and in the gopis. And now his commentary on texts 10 and 11. Previously wearing forest decorations, Krishna performed suitable pastimes. Hearing songs, he wandered in the forest. Now he is described with a change of dress. Tired at noon, he takes a bath in a large lake and then quickly puts on tilak and garland with little decoration. Eating a picnic lunch with his friends in a wide, elevated area, sitting on a stone slab under a huge tree, after sending the boys for gathering the cows, 
paying attention to the bees which have been attracted to his new garland and are his only association, he enjoys playing his flute. The gopis describe this. What to speak of the trusting trees, hear what happened to the living birds. Paragraph. He wears tilak made of gorika. I guess that's this red oxide mineral or something. Gorika. He wears tilak made of gorika, which is always attractive. He wears a garland made of most attractive flowers and most fragrant tulsi, which attracts bees because of its honey. Since all the bees would completely cover him, they instead circle around as if intoxicated, with the strong ones pushing away the weaker ones so they can come close to Krishna. <laughs> really detailed, huh? Because they are intoxicated, they sing loudly. <laughs> that is the special nature of their song. The song which they sing by their nature as bees is most attractive, abhishtam, to Krishna, because it expresses extreme eagerness. Or, whatever song he desires from them, they sing with colorful ragas, they have this astonishing nature in Vrindavan. In uttering the word desired, the gopis experience some hatred mixed with affection. Many things are dear and desirable to Krishna except us. Because the song is dear to him, he respects it. Just on starting to play a pleasurable song on his flute, all the birds, cranes, swans, and chakravakas dwelling in the lake Come to that song and approach Upasata. Approach Krishna, famous for his attractive nature, Harim. Though they are most numerous and inclined to play in joy, they are most fortunate. They then faint in bliss. With controlled minds, they become silent with closed eyes. Oh, Hanta. The gopis cry out in distress on not attaining their desires. As with other words indicating the Lord, there is another meaning. This is the last sentence. The birds seem to be worshipping Vishnu with controlled minds. That's Vrindavan. You know, that's a travel advertisement. What's it like there? What do they do? I didn't go to this place, but um, uh, during, during one visit to Boston, um, some devotees went to, I don't know which group it was, some, some Christian group that had this IMAX theater to, to, to promote their theology. <clears throat> and it was just, you know, so it's like this experience. It's not just like something visual, it's IMAX. <clears throat> and there's plans to do things like that. Um, in the temple of Vedic planetarium. There's um, um, a sannyasi in the Gaudiya line, one of Prabhupada's god brother's disciples, who is into it. He has this portable unit, a, a tent kind of thing, and people sit down and they have an IMAX experience about you know, with different teachings. So they're taking that technology, they plan to use it in the exhibits for the temple. Because besides the planetarium, you know, the 
chandelier thing, there's things all around that are to explain Vedic cosmology and the teachings connected with it. So, um, yeah, in Boston, they, this is many years ago, you know, IMAX was just coming out, so it was like a big deal. But they got into it. I'm sure they spent a lot of money because the technology was new, new, new. Then you always it's expensive when it's new. Um, so the, the devotees went to see how they're promoting their theology, and you sit down in the theater, and there's some. Um, it's really simple. From what I was told, it's um, you know a religious family that's part of that tradition, and they're. Um, um, having a nice time together, enjoying the companionship of family members, and they're eating, you know what, on the table, and down below is Fido the dog, and, you know, they feed scraps to Fido the dog, and, you know, they, they, they have a nice time, and then they go into their car to go somewhere, and it's nighttime, and something like um, they see some oncoming headlights, there's some screeching sound. There's a sound of a big collision, and the lights go out. You know, they die. And then you hear this nice, you know, classical music, dreamy music. And then the scene opens, and there they are in heaven, having dinner together at the table with Fido under the, do- under the table. And, you know, if you're part of this religion, that's what happens when you die... You, you just stay with your family and have a nice time. <clears throat> it's a little bit like that, what we heard from this Adam and his wife one asking about soulmates. You know, that, that's a, it's a, a, a modern phrase that means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But according to them, the Mormon faith says if you get married in the Mormon church and to get married in the Mormon church, there are some requirements. One of the requirements is you have to tithe. And tithe means 50% of your income goes to the Mormon church. Or you can't, you, you can't be married in a Mormon church. But if you do that and you get married in the Mormon church, that's your soulmate. And after this life... You go to the good place because you're a Mormon and you're with your soulmate. I mean, there's reincarnation in their theology. That's nice. Anyway. uh, Lots of different ideas out there of what the kingdom of God is like. That was very... um, if, they, if there's any definition to it, it's interesting. And mostly there's no definition to it. It's, you know, depict, how, how do you depict God if you don't know Vedic teachings? Um, it's not so common these days, but it used to be common that Christian preachers would go on the street corner and thump the Bible and tell people they're going to hell if you don't become Christian. That's not too palatable anymore, I guess. But they had tracks. And the tracks show God sometimes. And there's two varieties. One is looks like Abraham Lincoln and the Lincoln Memorial sitting there in a big stern, and you come before God for the judgment day. And, you know, have you been a Christian or, you, or not? Like, that was one picture. Then another picture of God is a cloud in the sky and this old man with a, with a beard that kind of you can't see very well because he's just the cloud and it's just this faint image. And that's God because he's the oldest, right? He's got a long beard and looks really old. It's a very different picture. <laughs> What's it like there? Why should we want to go there? What's the, what's the marketing tool to get people to go there? It, 
it, there's not it's not like um, you know shame on them or something like that. It's just knowledge um, is distinct from ignorance, or as light is distinct from darkness. And it's good that people have some idea of God and God loves you, Jesus loves you, and, and so forth. You know, then behave accordingly, please. <laughs> so we're very fortunate that we have access to Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, I find it very interesting. I often speak about this, but in Bhakti Vido Thakur's time, the printing press, offset printing, was just becoming um, known. And, it, you know, they, they manually they put letters onto a board and to, in, to make whatever the print, printing was going to be, and that was what offset printing was. So this big plate comes down, it gets inked, and stamps the, the paper. And, you know, the, the, just like the original Bhagavatam, the letters are kind of not even, because it wasn't digital, it was just manual. Offset printing. So he didn't have access to Bhagavatam. He was, he was a very learned person and moved in learned circles. And it wasn't until, it was, he had to get a handwritten copy when he was in his mid-30s. Now it's abundantly available. So so easily available, people may not take it so seriously or something. But in any case, um, who, those who do take, those who receive it, it's 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 transcendental mercy. In any case, what to speak if they read it, and a lot of that is going on during this uh, pandemic time. Pe- more people are reading Prabhupada's books than prior. So yay, more pandemic. For sure it's coming. (laughs) For sure it's coming. Not not for that reason, but um, by contact with Bhagavatam, there's there's light. Bhagavat Arka, the light of the Bhagavat. to give light in this dark age of Kali when people are engaged in so many <clears throat> awful things without listing the awful things. It's the age of Kali. And it gets wilder and noisier and violent. and Even when it's, you know, the goal is something that's mode of goodness, it's violent. People are. Kali's doing a good job. And what's what to do about it in this age of Kali? And that's the light of the Bhagavat. That's Vyasadeva's conclusion. And it's our Acharya's conclusion. So our Acharyas are giving us this very amazing, detailed close up. I mean, any one of these, supposing somebody's an artist. So just hearing any of these descriptions, paint paintings, or supposing someone is a filmmaker, make films, or supposing someone is a meditator, meditate. Supposing someone likes to chant shlokas, chant the shlokas. When there's a spiritual inclination, there's so many outlets that may come from and expressions of devotion. Somebody likes to teach, you know, teach these things. Now, many people don't have the interest or the patience, or, you know, it's Kali Yuga, so Manda Samanda Matayo Manda Bhagya. They don't have spiritual inclination. But somehow or other, if, if by hearing this, um, it's, it's, it's greatly beneficial. So e- even if someone is just introduced to some part, that's their eternal credit. And those that are instruments for introducing, that's 
they get a they get some Krishna points, <laughs> they get some assist points. And that you know the the assist Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his Sankirtan mission, some mercy from Lord Chaitanya, just by assisting. And when you when you give that to people, they can trash it. That's a risk. Um, Just a little sharing, and I'm going to end and see if there's some discussion. Um, 1970, summer. Um, I was I joined the Boston Temple, and um, one of the, the the very first day I was in the temple, we were I was in, invited. Not I didn't have a choice to go with the Sankirtan party. And, you know, it was night. I liked. So um, there I was in my, you know, rustic, non-devotional clothing and, you know, college kid mop of hair and, and stuff. So there was a person. We went to the, the, the Boston Common. And the Boston Common is like a park. There's two parts to it, etc. But that when we went to do our chanting, especially at midday, there's the red line and the green line. That's how they call their train system in Boston. And so it was really busy. And down over that way, just a few blocks away, was Washington Street, which was a big commercial street, mark, you know, shopping street. So people would, at lunchtime, people come out. So there we were chanting. And there was one man that either lived or worked in that area, and he came out every day, and he was a bad man. He was a madman. And, you know, he, he would rock back and forth, glaring at the devotees as they were chanting. And um, when it was, so the, the system was half an hour chanting, then whoever's chanting goes, distributes back to Godhead magazines. And then the persons distributing back to Godhead magazines come and chant. Half an hour, half an hour, two hour during the lunch break. And then back to the temple for lunch. That was that was our program. And then, then the it changed eventually. We just stayed out and had lunch out there. So, first day, and um, the the madman saw me, like he picked me out of the crowd. It wasn't it wasn't difficult to figure out. That he's a new guy. So when it was my turn to distribute back to God at magazines. He had this behavior that it would come up. And as we were giving the magazine to people, he'd start screaming like a madman. Don't take that magazine. Don't take that. And then he'd snatch it from the person's hand and rip it in pieces and jump up and down on it. And different things like that. He was like... So um, I took shelter of Jai Dwayta Maharaj. What should I do? Because he was... A brahmachari at the time. He said, don't worry, just keep going. So he, I, I did. And Jai Dwayta Maharaj waited until he started doing his thing, coming to me and telling people, don't take it. And he, Jai Dwayta Maharaj put his hands like this and at, at the top of his voice screamed the Hare Krishna mantra. And the man heard, put his hands on his ears and ran the other direction. And then he quoted the verse from Bhagavad Gita, and the demons run here and there, flee here and there. So I was there only for the summer, and at the end of the summer I was a trade to go to New York. But um, by the end of the summer, the, the man was still a madman. He would still come out every time, every lunch hour. But then but just from hearing the Hare Krishna mantra and the association of devotees, he did a U-turn, 180. He would scream at people, take the magazine, it's the best thing, and, you know, and jump up and down. And, you know, he was still a madman. <laughs> he didn't regain his normal faculties. But, you know, his heart changed just from hearing the, the Hare Krishna mantra and associating with the devotees. And, you know, it was he, what he was ripping the magazines and jumping on it, it was offensive. But somehow Krishna excused him and he... Um, 
I've, I've, there's some other stories like that, but bhakti has its power. That was that was an eye opener, as you know, it's a common expression for Indian people. It's an eye opener. It was an eye opener. <laughs> So what do we know? We're, we're the little people and we're hearing these very elevated topics of Krishna and Vrindavan. And certainly they're attractive. But, you know, as soon as class is over, it's, you know, back to everyday life and so forth. So how do we, just like it's a common, how does someone go from being involved in the world, just like that uh, teenage girl the other evening asked, how do we carry out our life and stay fixed in Krishna and what to speak of you know little girl or young teenager right um, etc etc it, it, it's it's resting upon the hearing process and the hearing is going to strike strike our hearts differently I like the discussion yesterday evening the more one has in this life and or previous lives and in this life in the degree of receptivity heard then that remembrance stays with you and you know what we're doing morning and evening at least and whatever else you do during the day chanting and hearing it awakens that forgetfulness now is it what about those who are students and what about those who are householders you know are they like where's what's their situation and their situation is they have some duties. According to psychophysical nature, there's duties. and stages of life, there's different duties. And you do your duties. And you engage in hearing and chanting. Stane is to tuck that important verse from the Bhagavatam. 10.14.3 Stay in your position. Perform your duties. Don't speculate. Engage in hearing. And so there's purification on the psychophysical nature side, and the primary is its purification on the heart side or the seat of consciousness side. And that's what we do. That's for our own uh, um, edification, clarification, purification, attraction to Krishna program, and extend that same opportunity to others according to your nature and capacity. And the more we can do the, the second one, it helps the first one. More than we can do the first one, it helps the second one. It's, it's, it's our lifestyle. Even in the midst of Kali Yoga where things are, you know, nutty. Just like when it seems like it can't get worse, it gets worse. <laughs> and then who knows, you know, doesn't take too much some war. And then, you know, during war, it's horrible. And then after war, people get more peaceful. I mean, it's just, it's just cycles of time without going into cycles of time. So whatever the cycle of time is, our program doesn't change. <laughs> At one time, it was in Mayapur, 1970, Five or seventy-six, Prabhupada. There was tension between um, India and Pakistan. No surprise. And uh, Prabhupada was speaking about uh, there may be a war. And then he was describing what the war would be like, and you know, Russia would take the side of this one, and America would take the side of that one, and become a world war. And the devotees were going, whoa, what do we do, Prabhupada? Should we stock up on, you know, supplies and put it in our farms and, you know, hunker down? And, and Prabhupada was like really unhappy. He said, this will be a great opportunity for preaching. <laughs> That's how he, he saw. I mean, it doesn't mean we're safe, just like now. It, it, you know, there's, there's, but we have to be in the mood of receiving and giving. And you figure out a way to receive and a way to give, and you do that. That's what we do. It's a great opportunity. People are all, you know, heebie-jeebies about what's going to happen. 
you know, it's, I'm not, it's not safe. Anyway, without going into details, the principle doesn't change. The, the form that it takes, we have to use intelligence to understand the form that it takes in different, different audiences. And when that enthusiasm is there, guess what? Krishna gives intelligence and there's a, there's a method. And then time moves and circumstances change and principles don't change. Details change. Okay, so I'll stop there. Let's see if there's some discussion. Gosh, it's 8.26 already. Anyone in the room would like to say, yes, pass the microphone, please. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, you were mentioning that uh, if the bhav is there, uh, then Krishna gives them intelligence, and then there is the method. I uh, use the word enthusiasm. Please use yes. my words. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Uh, so enthusiasm, and then knowledge, and then there is a method. So I want to know more about what you mean by there is a method. Krishna is the supreme controller, correct? And Krishna desires living entities come back to him, correct? So Krishna will supply the intelligence, whatever the whatever it will be effective, he'll supply. You know, we're we're not we're dull instruments, we're dull receivers. But you know, you you whatever your receiving capacity is, you do that. And then you refine it is because there's enthusiasm to to assist Krishna. Okay? Thank you, Maharaj. Okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj. So I have a very basic question. This came to me. Um, what should be our prayers? Uh, I mean, at, at my level, I'm asking uh, before starting to chant. Prayer is personal. The should be is the, you know, the trick word. It should be something that's meaningful to you. That's what it should be. There's standard prayers, and you, there's a host of them. And, um, you know, it depends on what moves your heart. That's, that's what it should be. Rupa Goswami has some prayers. Bhaktivinoda Thakur has some prayers. Shikshastaka has some prayers. Huh? Yeah, it's your personal prayer, standard prayers, something that's that is meaningful to you. That's what it should be. Thank you. Okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj. I was discussing with this, uh, this with someone. So this pandemic right now, and we, sh like you uh, said, we should be. I mean, people are seeking, and they should be uh, looking, and it's a great opportunity for us. But my experience, like uh, looking online and social media, where I usually look out, I'm not seeing much. Is like. Do we have to wait for the pandemic to be over? Or? No. <coughs> you know, I, I, I don't have an answer to what social media is doing or not doing because I don't go there. But I'm sure there are, and I, because there are devotees that are very creative and circumstances are, are, normal circumstances are restricted, and so there must be some methodology Um, I mean, here's just one example. One example is Chevron Maharaj has 
developed and is continuing to develop a system of reaching people through social media. And his system is being followed or, or not co copied, but styled like what he's doing by others. Garanga and others are doing through social media. He's just taking simple messages and with some visuals that go along with that simple message in a real bite-sized, short, impactful messages for, you know, broad audiences. And um, in New Zealand, Dev Amartya Maharaj in Wellington, you can go check that one out, they have uh, a system of reaching young people. And, you know, it's very young people-ish. There's a magazine and there's this is and that's and statements and interviews and you know it's 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 different. It's for a certain audience and so it, it's out there. And you know when there's a will, there's a way. Or I'm using the word enthusiasm and Krishna gives intelligence. So it's it's there are possibilities. Then one has to have some time and. I guess, you know, some kind of technology skills so you can use that medium. I don't, you know, I don't know anything about it. But I know some people that do know something about it and they're, they're doing something. Okay. Do you have something? Okay, go ahead. Thank you, Maharaj, uh, for that uh, nice, <coughs> sorry, nice description of uh, uh, the advertisement of the spiritual world. I was just thinking of the um, maddened bees. Which the the mad mad bees, the yeah. the bees that were mad and you know like intoxicated. Um, um, looks like there is like scope for madness and intoxication. Oh yeah, in the spiritual world. Oh yeah. Um, of course, it's transcendental. Madness, yeah, and transcendental love, uh, Um I guess my question is: is like when somebody becomes that mad bee in the spiritual world, uh, is there any relation to like how they live their life in the material world? Like for someone to become that mad bee in the spiritual world, or is it just? completely different when it comes to like how they've lived. Is there any relation, correlation to how they've lived their life in the material world that they become a mad bee in the spiritual world? Or is it just, you know, when you go to the spiritual world, it's just a different like mood you get into? I'm unaware of any connection. However, the, 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 just in, in hearing your question, the intensity of absorption leads to degrees of intensity of emotion up to madness. Like, you know, we, we've been hearing, this is a for example, we've been hearing about the love of Nanda and Jasoda. Now the others who are um, cowherd men, cowherd women, they have love for Krishna also. But the degree of absorption is, is there's no real comparison. They're in the superlative position. And then they're compared to Vasudeva and Devaki, who had what great honor of having Krishna as their son but they didn't have the same intensity of absorption. So, comparative and superlative. But that's not hitting your question. Your question is previous lifetime. But I'm just saying, even in the spiritual realm, it's intensity of absorption. So, that's where we have to look to in our practice of sadhana, intensity of absorption. You know, like, how attentive are we when we're chanting japa? the intensity, the degree of absorption. And, you know, that's in part what the, the theme is of this coming festival of the Holy Name. Yearning, enthusiasm, 
spontaneous. You know, degree of absorption. And depending upon the degree of absorption, that's where we go. Online questions from Raksha. Is it is it mentioned in the Bhagavatam that women are considered less intelligent? Why is it so? Please enlighten me. Uh, there's there's uh, multiple answers. The, the first part, I don't know of any statement in the Bhagavatam specifically. There's the reference in the Bhagavad Gita, Striyavaishas Tata Shudras, Tepiyanti Param Gatim. But when it comes to um, how to understand that statement that's in the Bhagavad Gita, and how Prabhupada expressed it. Or, you know, I guess here's one statement that comes to mind. Queen Kunti comparing herself to the transcendentalist who can't fully understand Krishna, so what to speak of us women. You know, painting herself or portraying herself as less intelligent. But yet, on the other hand, she actually understands Krishna in ways that other transcendentalists or aspiring transcendentalists cannot understand Krishna because of her prema. So the, the, the point is when it comes to prema or when it comes to the stage of maturing bhakti, there's no material distinction. This, this nomenclature has to do with minus bhakti, there's the material distinction. So uh, I'll send you, you remind me, and I'll send you some answers that devotees have given over a period of time to that question, and this devotee can then read what they say and then write to the people that said it and say, I don't, I, I don't like what you said, or something like that. <laughs> can you post my phone number in the group so that they can reach me? <clears throat> this question is from Sanchari. Um, does your version of Narada Muni appear for every Brahma? Or was it just for our Brahma that he had appeared? Th this question has it seems to be a popular question. And the answer, the, the honest answer is I don't know. And I've never re received or never read anything anywhere that says yes or no. Uh, so at the same time, um, there's indication in Brihat Bhagavatamrita by Narada Muni to Gopakumar that he and other associates of the Lord, like Uddhava, because also the three of them are there together, they have multiple, multiple expansions for the Lord's purposes. So it's it seems, you know, logically, if not Narada, somebody that's in that same role or bhava for the purposes of Krishna's pastimes and edifying people and so forth. That, that, that's the, the logical one, but, you know, I don't know anything definitive from Scripture that says yes or no. Yes, sir. Continuation question is, also we see that Narada Muni has a lot of responsibility in helping to move the Lord's pastimes by playing tricks or enlightening Krishna's devotees like Prahlad Maharaj, etc., who took up this responsibility before Narada Muni became Narada Muni? Are there multiple pure devotees who take up this service, but Narada Muni is the most well-known? Uh, same answer. Question from Sri Radhika Mataji. It makes sense that there are some, there is somebody doing that service, but you know I don't know anything definitive that says yes or no. How does a devotee stay non-judgmental and empathic while at the same time having faith in the statement you read? There are no good qualities in non-devotees. Well, non-judgment, there's, there's knowledge and there's judgment. The advocacy of Bhagavad Gita is 
to be situated in knowledge. And to be situated in knowledge in the true sense is to see as Krishna sees. And Krishna is not judgmental. So when you have knowledge like Krishna has, then you're not judgmental. You can see here's the mode of ignorance, here's the mode of passion, here's the mode of goodness, here's transcendence, here's what it here's its features, its symptoms, here's what it looks like, here's what it feels like. And so you can be situated in knowledge without being judgmental. So to say that there's you know, there there's um for a non transcendentalist to say that unless you're a devotee, you don't have good qualities, that's like, you know, that's very irritating. It sounds judgmental. But what's the meaning? And the meaning is that which is eternally existing, or there's not, there's no feature of time involved, or it doesn't come into being and then go out of being, or manifest like the modes of goodness. There's qualities of the modes of goodness, and they show goodness. But then there's com- competition with the modes of nature, and the goodness disappears and something else. So time moves, and the good quality disappears. So that's not a transcendental sense of a good quality. There is a transcendental sense of good quality, and that's beyond the modes of nature. So unless one is beyond the modes of nature, good qualities are going to be intermittent at best, insubstantial, the reflection of the real thing kind of qualities. It's a reflection. It's not the real thing. So that's not judgmental. It can be judgmental. Na 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 na. I'm a devotee, so I've got good qualities, and you don't. Na 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 na. <laughs> That's not a devotee that has, has that mentality. It's, it's not real knowledge. A question from Uttama Bhakta Prabhu. Preaching not only means giving the message of Krishna directly, but also helping someone to grow from mode of ignorance to passion to sure, goodness sure. in an easy and understandable way. Yes, that's right. Uh, question from Prakash. And how somebody does that, it's completely different for each person. I mean, how Prabhupada did what he did, and how Bhakti Siddhanta did what he did, and how Bhakti Vinod Thakur did what he did, and how Gorky Shurdas Babaji Maharaj did what he did, and how Jagannath, you know, everyone's different. How it's going to manifest in the world is going to be different according to Krishna's indication and one's nature. So it's not. Um, don't expect something that doesn't match reality. It's going to be different how it manifests, but the principle doesn't change. Question from Prakash Prabhu. Um, some persons in the same apartment building as my parents in India have COVID-19 Uh-oh. and they are hospitalized. One of them died yesterday. Oh. This dead person was the same age as my father both my parents seem to be disturbed by this. Good. I am not sure how to help them other than saying, don't be afraid. Could you please advise? Well, do lots of self-quarantine. <laughs> you know, follow what the, you know, the, the people that know about this thing say to do. You know, that there's the emotional and then there's the practical. So both. Question from Rupa Vilas Prabhu. Are the gopis realizing Krishna as the Supreme Lord in this chapter because they are addressing Krishna as Adi Purusha? We, it, it's answered in the purport, or the, the commentary. It, they say, Iva, Adi Purusha Iva. Their sweetness mood as such, it eclipses his seeing him with majesty. Another question. Here the rivers are being considered as wives of ocean and the creepers as wives of trees. 
Are these entities really connected as couples or the gopis are simply imagining? I don't think there was a religious ceremony for them to be married. <laughs> <laughs> it's a relationship. And it's not a formalized relationship, but it's, you know, it's a re- vines cling to trees. So th- there is a relationship. And they're thinking in that way. And I don't know if the vines consider this is my husband or something like that. Or the rivers are considering that's my husband, the ocean. It's a relationship. Leave it at that. Question from Hari Prabhu. Um, Are there any references which talk about writing a mantra as opposed to chanting it? I don't know. Gujaratis, I know, do this all the time. But, you know, is there scriptural authority for that? I don't know. I, I, I imagine, I imagine that there's some basis for it. And, you know, writing means it goes to the mind. When you're writing, it goes to your mind. So it's the mind and, and, and engaging the hand instead of the ear and tongue. So it's it's another set of senses engaging the mind in the name. So there must be, I mean, spiritually there's, there's benefit. It's not the primary recommendation for this age. It's through sound. But is there a scriptural basis for that? I don't know. You can ask some of your Gujarati scholar friends. Maybe they know. Question from Paramatma Prabhu. Sometimes we see non-devotees show some really good qualities. Mm -hmm. But Srimad Bhagavatam says, without being a devotee of the Lord, one has no good qualities. Is is it that as time passes, the good qualities fly away? How to understand it? I answered that question already. Good is good. And then transcendental good is permanent. That's the distinction. That's all. That's it. Guru Maharaj, one thing. You the online audiences, um, is, it, uh, is there Bhagavatam class tomorrow, Saturday? And I Saturday? don't know. What you, what's your? There is 11.30 class and the evening 6.30 class. Okay, so the answer is no. Srila Prabhupada, keep. Thank you.